Hi, I'm Dave Cross. Every week on my website, online.davecrossworkshops.com, I answer my subscriber questions in the form of a video tutorial. This particular question came in at someone that said, I'm trying to use content-aware fill and it's really not working for me. So I want to explore and hear why I think many times the patch tool is a better option than content-aware fill. Now, don't get me wrong, content-aware fill is fantastic a lot of the time. But I want to have a little more control and that's what the patch tool gives me. So here in this vacation photo, the palm trees right in the middle to me are a little bit of a distraction just because we can't see any of the greenery on the palm tree. So I'd like to get rid of it, quote unquote, using content-aware fill. So first of all, let's duplicate the background layer because one of the first things that's a bit of a drawback with content-aware fill is you have to do it on a pixel-based layer. In other words, you can't fill to a blank layer, which when we see the patch tool, that's one of its advantages. So let's just do this really quickly here, make a selection around the palm trees, like this, and then on this copy layer, we're going to go to Edit, Fill, and Content Aware, and click OK. Now, the middle part, it did an OK job, but at the top and the bottom, we'd end up having to fix that. So instead, let's see how the patch tool might help us. So I'm going to delete this top layer, and instead add a blank layer, because again, one of the advantages of the patch tool is that we can use it onto a blank layer. So I'm going to make the same kind of selection I had before, fairly rough, but just to show you the difference. And now if I go to my patch tool, which is found here under the same spot as the healing brushes, I want to make sure the content aware is turned on and I want to use sample all layers. As for these numbers here, I'm going to leave them with whatever they're at and show you how we can change them after the fact. So now I just drag, and here's one of the first advantages of the patch tool is we can choose what we want to use as our patch. Now in this case, the sky is pretty solid, but there is that little bit of darker blue streak going across. So if I adjust, you can see how I'm getting a preview so I can see which areas I clearly shouldn't use and where I should use. Overall, it's done pretty well, but there's still a little bit of an area here and down here. So this is where this tool is quite unique. Most tools in Photoshop, you have to set the tool settings first and then use the tool. The patch tool is one of a small number now where you can adjust the settings live. As long as you haven't done anything else, I've moved the patch over, it's still waiting for me. I can go in here and say, well, what happens if I put the structure higher? And it redoes it and all of a sudden it's better here, pretty good down there too. The color setting sometimes will make all the difference. So look at that. Now, it still needs a little bit of work, but less than it did before, and the results of this are on a blank layer. So if later on I'm looking at it and decide I still want to tweak something, I still can. Now, I'm not suggesting the patch tool will always be perfect, but the two things I like about it is it puts it on that separate layer and that we have those controls where we can adjust to see if we can get a better result. The chances are you may still have to make another patch, another patch just to kind of finalize it, but compared to content-aware fill where it's kind of a random thing that it often does a good job, but what happens when it doesn't, that's when the patch tool really shines.